Talk about my, a sign. Yeah. So instead of Hell's Angels, you had Heaven's Angels. I had, I had Christian bikers surrounding me. Surrounding your car. Which, of course, I didn't write at that moment go, okay, well, I'm a Christian. Yeah. But I thought, you know, God yeah. is funny. He spoke to me in a way that I would connect with. Right. So I was like, all right. And then little by little, things started to unfold. I met someone. They took me to church, checked it out, and then... And, and, it and it's a growing process, much like a flower. You actually have to plant the seed, and, and, and Christ slowly re reveals himself to you. And now, uh, going from acting and dancing, the Lord's really bringing you into what? Full-time ministry. Now I'm moving into ministry. Tell me about that. Well, um, I'm just passionate about people being healthy and whole, because I was desperate right. to be healthy. And even though, you know, people always ask me, they're like, you're a born-again Christian? What happened to you? Were you, you know, a drug addict? They always expect that I was like something, like I was in a hotel doing right. crack or, you know. <laughs> right. And I guess a lot of people have to hit a rock bottom to come sure. to God. But for me, you know, I felt like, yes, I have so many things going on in my life, and it's great, but there's still areas. Sure. There's still things that I just don't feel totally fulfilled. Right. So I was searching and I was seeking. And even as a Christian... A couple years into my Christianity, God was really changing me, and I was, you know, I was feeling different and feeling more at peace. Mm -hmm. But there were still areas. Mm -hmm. And I remember about two years into my, into my Christian walk, I was praying, and I was like, God, you know, like I had, there was a big issue with food. Mm -hmm. And uh, overeating, emotional eating, eating disorders. Mm -hmm. And even though I was seeing healing in a lot of areas of my life, in this area, I was not seeing healing. And right. I was going to church, and I was reading the Word, and I was praying, and I was like, God, what's up with this? Right. You know, so I came before him and I said, you know, what's going on here? And, and I felt God speak to me in my spirit. He said, you know, you don't really have a food issue. You have a feelings issue. Hmm. Emotional healing. An emotional, yeah. yeah. He said, it's not about food and trying to control the food. It's, trying to, it's about you learning how to deal with your feelings and process your feelings. You're eating for the wrong reasons. Yeah, well, we were just talking with Pastor Raul and, and hate dominated his life. But, you know, these emotional feelings inside you were dominating your life mm -hmm. and they, they dominate really all Christians. How do we how do we deal with that? Well one of the things God spoke to me and I love it when God talks to you it's not this booming voice. Right. You know you're praying and you just get a thought that you've never really had before so you're like oh that's interesting. Right. You know that's how you, you get a sense about something and I remember praying about this issue and God spoke in my spirit he said you have too many counterfeit comforters mm -hmm. and I was like Oh, I never, never thought of that. Yeah. And then it started to unfold, and the Lord started to show me that in the Bible, the Holy Spirit was called the Comforter, mm -hmm. but that I wasn't going to Him for comfort. Mm -hmm. So when issues came up, or there were feelings, or rejection, or pain, I was going to food as a comforter. Right. And I think everyone can relate to this, because we all have our counterfeit comforters. Right. You know, when you're not in the church, you know, you're doing drugs, <clears throat> alcohol, cigarettes. In the church, you're doing food, debt. Right. You know, we right. all have these places. We're running right. to the mall. We're running to the pizza instead of running to God. Right. So God started to really show me in the Word how to get free, which is learning how to come to Him. He showed me all these yeah. principles, and this is what I'm passionate about, and this is what I teach people. And so you're going now full-time to churches and, and teaching this very thing, yeah. taking your experience and the, the things that God have, has taught you. I'm teaching people how to make the Bible applicable and practical. Practical. It's not just a book of stories. Amen. You know, it's Amen. practical. God gave us a manual. Like when you go to buy a car, you get a big, huge 500-page right. manual right. about right. how to drive it, which none of us ever read. Yeah. But in life, no, the ladies don't. The, read okay, it. I the read girls, it. I, I we give it to the guys, yeah. and they just tell us what to do, fix it, make yeah. it work. But you know, we're trying to work this life thing out and navigate it, and God actually gave us a manual with very practical tools about how to speak, about how to think, about, uh, you know, teaching us how to come to Him that will bring the healing, that nothing, that no therapy will bring, that, you know, no great job will bring, no success, no money, no relationship with a person. Right. Those are all great, but they're not going to heal those areas. So that's what I'm passionate about. Well, it's, it's something that we need to hear, and the Lord is really directing you to with in, in the area of the Holy Spirit and yeah. people receiving the Holy Spirit. How'd you know that? Well, the Holy Spirit <laughs> told me. <laughs> but uh, actually, Carmen told me too. But uh, you know what? Look right in that camera and, and just talk to people at home. Tell us about, you know, the, this, the ministry aspect of the Holy Spirit and what He does in, in your life. You know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is an interesting topic. I'm just going to say a couple things on it. A lot of people believe that tongues are not for everyone. But if tongues were not important, there wouldn't be such division right. about this. If it was not a big deal, 
there wouldn't be so much division in the church about this area. There's tons of scripture that says that tongues are for everyone. And Paul himself says that he spoke in tongues more than anyone. And if the man who had the most wisdom and revelation prayed in tongues the most, <laughs> then I'm going to do what he did. That's right. Because I want Amen. the wisdom and the revelation. God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't give, he's not going to say, well, I'm going to give you this gift, but not you. The Bible is whosoever. Whosoever shall go after it, hunger it, God will give you that gift. And it's different. It's different than being in the office of something. Like it, everyone, if you have the Holy Spirit, everyone can prophesy. That doesn't mean I'm in the office as a prophet. But if I have the Holy Spirit, he may use me to prophesy. Right. He may use me to speak a word of knowledge. So that's where there's, people get real tripped up on tongues. But I'm telling you Amen. that it is a powerful yeah. gift and it's the Holy Spirit at a different level and it opens you up to understanding of the word, of who God is. It makes it personal. When you want to feel God, when you want to experience God, I don't want to just understand God. I don't, you know, I don't want someone to tell me about what it's like to love. Oh, well, it's like this. I want to feel it. Right. So that's the same way with God. I don't want to sit here and try to tell you, oh, he's like this, he's like this, you have to believe me. You're going to believe it when you experience it for yourself. Amen. And a big Amen. part of that is hooking in with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh. Good words. Yeah. Good words. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, excellent, excellent. You. you know what? You've got a website. People can get in touch with I you. I have a website. Uh, it's, uh, it's on my website, yeah. how you can get a hold of me, yeah. rubialamort.com. And I have some teachings on there. And even have, I'll do a little, a little plug. Yeah. Counterfeit comforters. This is me doing that teaching on counterfeit comforters. Amen. And uh, there's some other teachings on there, too. And there's stories about Prince and Buffy and all sorts of things you may want to hear. So. Excellent, excellent. Full-time ministry. That's what I'm so excited about. Thank you, you, Really, because we need to hear good I stuff like this. I have found a career that I'm not going to retire from. Good. That's right. You just go with your boots on, like all of us. Thank you. God bless you.